left Camaray in Sumer. Uh, we were there two nights in the marina, really had a nice stay. And we are now headed out to the island of Gushant, just off of the landmass right here where Brest is. Karen and Tom welcoming you to our Life 4.0, where we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time. This video is part of a series where we start from the northwest corner of Spain and go all the way up to the Swedish and Finnish archipelagos in the Baltic Sea. Our first challenge was crossing the often tempestuous Bay of Biscay to land on and explore the beautifully rugged Brittany coast of France. We continued northeast along the English Channel first along the north coast of France, including the historic and charming Channel Islands, then along the south coast of England. After rounding the White Cliffs of Dover, we spend too little time in Belgium and the Netherlands before making a beeline for the Kiel Canal and the entrance into the Baltic Sea. We hop along the north coast of Germany before turning sea roads north to explore the amazing Swedish eastern coast. Our furthest reaches found us in Turku and Henko, Finland. What a wonderful part of the world. We hope you enjoy. but we still had a really nice visit in the area. Um, today we have to be on our toes. We've got a lot, there's a lot of current. It's um, spring tide, so full moon, and currents are gonna be at their strongest. And there's a point of land here off of Brest that uh, a lot of rocks that lead out to the island of Houchant. And we need to be very careful about going through that area at slack water. So. We left the marina at 10. It's a two-hour trip roughly out there. We want to get there around noon, which is when slack is. Uh, right now, we are going a little too fast. We were trying like five to five and a half knots in our planning. Um, right now, we're going uh, six knots, even with a reef and a jib. So actually, we're trying to, <laughs> rare times, we're trying to sail slow um, so that we don't get there before slack. We had, like I said, two days um, in this area at Camaray Sumer, and um, it's just a, an amazing area for coastal hikes. You can't get all the way out to the lighthouse here. It's blocked off. There's actually a wall. Uh, I ran out there this morning. There's a, there's a, a moat <laughs> around the wall at the very top. Uh, Pre-World War II built uh, wall construction, but there is a lot of World War II um, artifacts here, a lot of bunkers, a lot of um, uh, battery locations. It was very heavily fortified point to land and we went to a very nice museum uh, that was in a renovated um, battery bunker area. Uh, it was interesting. Most of it was in French but we got the gist of uh, some of it. So kind of a surprise visit. We didn't expect it to be this nice and again the coastal hikes and all that were really incredible. Once we get to Ushant, then we have some more trickiness ahead of us. We won't be out of the woods yet. Uh, the main anchorage, Ushant, a uh, big uh, indentation in the island that goes in from the southwest. And so that's a very attractive place, unless the wind's blowing out of the south or southwest, which is what it's doing now and tomorrow. We were planning to stay in there two nights, so there's another anchorage on the east side of the island, but there's only three moorings available there, and the anchoring, the anchoring itself is difficult, so we're, um, so we're not sure whether those three moorings are going to be available. There's some other little places around the island, but we have kind of a fallback plan of coming back to the coastline if none of this works, but we're hoping we can get there. 
supposed to be nice island. They're bike rentals, and uh, so we're gonna try try all that out and see if we can get to the island. So we're heading up to this point, uh, St. Matthew, off of uh, the Brest Peninsula, getting ready to do this uh, channel that they refer to as Channel du Four, and the seas are huge. We've had a couple windy days here, and I was thinking. That I know it's always so hard to show the wind, the waves when you're trying to record, but if I showed the fact that these buoys in this lighthouse sort of come in and out of being able to see them. So these are definitely, I don't know, four or five meter seas. Basically, you think about standing in the trough and how many of you could be standing on your head. See that? We almost lost the lighthouse there. Um, and that's way up, you know, that's that's just way up on the bluff over there. Which is part of the reason why they put them up so high, so that you can see them when you're in big seas. We got this red marker up here marking these rocks. So as soon as we go around this, then we start to um, head to starboard, and we're going to go up through the Chanel de Four, um, and then that splits off as we go over to Ushant. So we just... Um, we just furled up in the main and we're sailing with the jib only, doing about five knots or so, just so that we can have more control. Uh, we're going to be heading downwind here. We don't want to deal with jibing while we're going through what looks like a very wide open area, but uh, in reality is there's lots of shallows and there's a kind of a designated channel through here that we've built a route on, on the chart plotter that we will follow. So. And we're getting here, it's 11.30, slack is at noon, so we're timing is pretty good. All right, so we're heading through into this area called the Channel du Four. Here are some of the off islands in the archipelago that is uh, Ushant off there. Um, see a lot of white water. So right now, the, the uh, it's just about slack, but there's still some current coming against us, and the wind is behind us. So this is creating uh, quite a disturbed sea out here. So currently we're sailing with just the jib. Wow, so now we just went with uh, having a 0.7 knots helping us uh, to 1.2 against us, uh, just as we made a little bit of a turn. So this is definitely where the tides are switching around through here. We just turned around this thing over here and the lighthouse. Some ruins up next to the lighthouse. It'd be neat to be able to walk those grounds. Again, this is uh, the point of St. Matthew. We are in some nutty seas. Yep. Bit of a washing machine. Bit of a washing machine. We got about three knots of current against us, even though right now is supposed to be slack, almost. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, Tom was saying it's not a perfect science. So not less than five minutes later, after my previous recording, behind us is still see a lot of white water, but it's a lot more flat right now. We're able to steer a straighter course, and there's not nearly as much um, white water, even though the wind is still as strong. So um, that's evidence that the tide is, the current is switching. So, although it's later, it's quite a bit later than um, it was predicted to be switching. So we ended up making it through the kind of tricky part of the Chanel de Four. Sailed all the way through. We had uh, our jib up the whole time and we just unfurled the main as the uh, sort of sea conditions calmed down and we had a course that would accommodate it. We we're downwind most of the time, so dead downwind. So just having the jib up was enough for us to get by. And we're taking turns of the wheel. Yep. Yep. You got 20 knots of true wind. All right. We're about six knots. Yep, so the wind peaked up and we were trying to get through here before the wind got really strong so that we wouldn't have all the craziness of going through the, that channel, the strong winds and tide. So we should be over to Ushant in a couple hours and keeping our fingers crossed for one of those three moorings. 
All right, we just uh, arrived at, on the island of Ushant, and uh, we are on the eastern side, I guess it is, in a harbor called Stiff. Port du Stiff. Port du Stiff. This is where the ferry comes in. It uh, doesn't get high reviews for how glamorous it is, but we don't care about glamour. We got great protection from the wind where we are. Um, and uh, we will be taking a walk or bike rental to the main town and seeing all that. You can see this is where the ferry comes in and that is one huge breakwater. Um, and you can see the stairs over here where it's one option for getting onto the dock. I think we'll have to take our dinghy over to that ramp and wheel it up there. Um, so, as you head north, tides get bigger and the breakwaters get bigger, <laughs> the control towers get bigger. Uh, very common here, which is nice. We were hoping for these kind of conditions where we'd be uh, protected from the south wind and we were hoping to be able to get on one of the moorings. There was two available here, so that all worked out well. And we had an awesome sail over here. Seven or eight foot, seven or eight knots of speed. Uh, actually, we hit nine just in the last bit here coming into the harbor. Oh, what a difference a day makes. The sun is out, there were bike rental agencies right on shore, and we're off to explore this remote jewel of an island. was the main anchorage. You can see all these moorings here. Main anchorage in Ushant for visitors. Free visitor moorings, but today, like this little boat here, you would not want to be out there rolling around. I know. And then all those waves breaking to come in here. We didn't think it was going to be good, but we didn't know for sure. We thought well, maybe we might be protected somewhat being all the way in here. But this is the southwest wind and uh, it is messy. So very happy that we were able to find a mooring ball at the Port of Stiff. happy with our choice. Jolly, waves are big. There's just something stunningly beautiful about uh, the wildness of nature. You have these dainty flowers growing on the edge of this crazy cavern where the washing machine water is just coming up attacking the shoreline. It's pretty, pretty remarkable.
were headed to the north coast of Ile du Chant. In this area here, the island is rustic throughout, but as we biked much of it, we passed through several different collections of houses. I wouldn't call them villages as there was little to no commerce outside of the large town on the western end of the island. They were more like neighborhoods, I guess. Biking was a perfect way to experience this island. Liking all the solar. Solar on the roof, solar in the backyard, solar hot water. up here these uh, <clears throat> overfalls so we got current going from right to left and then we got these wind waves and swells coming in from the ocean and uh, when current goes against the waves this is what you get you get these big standing waves that hardly move at all but then they break and it's really uneven very difficult to navigate through this kind of area so we've got a sweet spot up there on the top of the island too sit waiting <laughs> and waiting and waiting on this lovely day and getting ready to leave today we've had two wonderful days here that have been a mixture of transitional weather and a little bit of sunshine and today is just full of sun we would have loved to have played here again today but uh, our schedule is such that we need to be moving on normally we would have left a couple hours ago but uh, we are um, not quite as in control of our schedule here uh, in this part of Brittany as other times and other sailing destinations. You have to watch the tides and the currents very closely here. Um, and uh, so it involves making sure that you've either got favorable current for the direction you're going in or uh, favorable tide levels and currents where you're going to be uh, staying overnight or hopefully both of those and um, today we've got we're gonna head out we've got a little bit of contrary current um, that's we have to just sort of compromise with going over to La Abarak and we're doing that because we'll have uh, better conditions we'll be arriving hopefully around slack water in the river up at Abarak so you can see where we are we're at an island over here Ushant off the it actually is the most western part of france and uh it's been a lovely stay here um, but when you zoom in here you can see all of these current arrows so right now the current is coming uh, out of the northeast and down the coast we're going up this way and so we are going to have to buck the current on the way up through there um, we're going into a little estuary here a harbor called La Abarak and you can see kind of how messy it is a lot of shallows all the green areas are areas that show at low tide mud flats or rocky areas uh, they are covered up at high tide we're gonna come in this river entrance and come in to the marina right here this river has a current of about four knots at spring tides and so we're trying to get in here. We're going to possibly anchor here or there's some mooring balls over here. Um, one of those. I don't think we'll go into the marina because it'll just be too complicated. But either way, you kind of, you know, we're 
we're choosing the benefit of slack water at our rival um, at the cost of these all these um, current arrows showing how we're going to be going against the current. If you enjoy our videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. We are not on Patreon or any other method of getting revenue for our videos. Subscribing is free to you, but it really helps us as it encourages YouTube to recommend our videos to others. Thanks so much for your support. I like telling jokes to the ocean wind as a stare out the water where our children swim and I